Hey, what's up? Welcome to Homegrown on Alt AZ 933. It's Mo, where you get your new music discovery from all of these amazing, talented artists and bands from our own backyard. I'm so glad you can join me tonight because I have a very uh, special guest, very special guest for us. Uh, a Phoenix alt band that has been in the scene since 2003. I was still in high school at this point. And since then, they have found mainstream success with theme songs for Cartoon Network, Scooby-Doo, The Mystery Begins, Sports Center, Good Day LA, and the MLB Network Countdown. They have a new album coming out very soon, next month, September 2nd, called Love and Drugs. I would love for you to welcome with me, Slade and Danny of Ann Arbor. Hello. Yo, yo. Hi, how we doing? Oh. I'm good. I'm excited that you guys are finally in. I'm glad that we can make this happen. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of good things coming around. I just saw you guys play, what, like a month ago? Yeah. yeah. At yep. Crescent Ballroom. Yep. Yep. True. That was actually a really cool show because your brother, Stravers, yeah. or, you know, Andrew, Andrew. Stravers, <laughs> yeah, from Catastro, so joined you guys too. I'm like the only one that knows him as Andrew. <laughs> it is yeah. weird to say Andrew. I just call him Stravers all is. the time. It is weird. But yeah, he filled in on drums for us. For that show, and it was just super fun because it's something we've wanted to do for a long time. You guys have and, never uh, done anything like that before? Uh, he's he's I played mean, for he's us filled, one time, yeah, um, but it was before. nothing like this. Um, this was like pretty, I mean, sold out show. I mean, we, we kind of, and it was a short notice for him, so I had both brothers up there. It was awesome. Yeah, you guys got this new album coming out September 2nd, Love and Drugs. Yes. America's favorite pastimes. Yep. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, what led you to this title for the album? Well, the record definitely has um, its moments of, you know, a little bit of maybe some drug use, put in maybe like a metaphor, but um, it's like past relationship stuff. So, you know, you fall in love, you guys fall into habits and stuff, and then we kind of base it off that. Um, and I was definitely getting out of a bad relationship, so I think that it kind of expressed in a way towards this record. Well, you guys have a new song that we're going to be debuting tonight called Emergency Yes. that I have been listening to religiously. I love nice. it. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So we've got Sammy Adams on it, and... Uh, Basically, it's kind of just about, I mean, the emergencies of, you know, relationships and stuff, like kind of like I just talked about, you yeah. know? We were in the studio writing the song, and we were kind of talking about, uh, it was during COVID at the time, so everybody didn't really know what was going to happen, everybody's mm -hmm. freaking out, all that kind of stuff, and then that kind of turned into a topic of conversation of relationship emergencies, where sometimes you either you or the other person thinks something is such an emergency or some horrible things happening, but you right. just got to kind of like take it easy. And like it seems so important at that moment, but yeah, in reality, right. it's like if you just give it some time, yeah. let you like, breathe a little. Even just a, little a simple bit. text or something, you know, it's like, I don't know. It be turning so big and it's like, yo, just calm down. You know, it's, it's not that bad, you know, and it could look at the bigger picture of stuff. So now I'm just curious on the example exactly of what the emergency that you had that made you think of this. Oh, man, there was lots. <laughs> Trust me, there was lots. There was lots That's of a moments. past relationship. <laughs> lots of moments, you know, just being gone and being on tour and not, you know, being there with your significant other. A lot of stuff comes up and when you can't be there and it's just over text and over FaceTime, it just gets gets hard. Yeah, it's really hard. And. Problems happen, you know, so yeah. text messages sometimes isn't enough. So uh, Agreed. And yeah. also sometimes messages through text messages don't. They don't. Yeah, translate. They don't translate, yes. man. Yes, they don't translate. Sometimes they think you're saying one thing. In reality, you're making a sarcastic joke or whatever. Yes. Oh, we've all been there. Yeah. It's, this, yeah. this song might, is definitely for everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, how did you guys come to meet Sammy Adams? How did he get into the fold? I think it was more of a management thing. We were kind of looking for um, somebody to be a part of the song. Mm -hmm. um, we reached out to some people, but we kind of, we have never done anything with, you know, hip hop or R&B. And we kind of thought maybe we would to go on that route. Um, so our managers reached out to like, some people and they were like, Sammy Adams is interested. So I had never heard of him, honestly, so I looked him up and I thought he was great. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it'd be awesome to collab with him. And we sent him over the song. and yeah. He loved it. He was just really excited about it. We talked to him on the phone and we were just like, you know, do your thing. Yeah. And, you know, this is what the song's about. <clears throat> do your thing, write your own thing. And he sent us back something just incredible. And yeah, he crushed it. He it together from there. He had a couple versions, you know, we talked him over the phone, we gave him a couple of, you know, whatever we thought maybe would make it cooler, and he sent it back, and we are like, this is it, cool, we loved it. Nice. Yeah. Now, is this the only collaboration that you have on the album? No. So we have a couple others. We also got our boys, Belaganas, had to do oh, Belaganas yeah. on there. Yeah. Yes! And that track is probably my favorite track on the record. What's uh, it called? Yeah. It's called Durango. Okay. Yeah, it's called Durango. Um, and then we have Sarah Coda from uh, Silent, Silent Rival. Rival. Yeah. Yep. Oh, dang. She's singing on a song. And 
we have Sammy, and we have. Sammy. Do we have another one? I think that's it. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah that's we it. have some <laughs> other co-writes from other people on the song. Uh, we did some sessions in Los Angeles with Michael Pepe. Yeah. Um, and Matt Keller, of course. Matt oh, Keller's boy, done Matt. the whole yeah. record. Yeah. Legend. You know, he's one of my best friends. He's the Love man. Guy. Yeah. It's actually my brother's at his house right now. <laughs> <laughs> All the way out in Miami. He's farming. Huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I have yet farming. to go out there. God, I need to go this <laughs> way. Yeah. He's a farmer now. Yeah, he definitely is. <laughs> he, he definitely, definitely is. looks like one. I, I <laughs> have been for sure. I have been trying to make it out there and just to go hang out with him because you know we actually had Matt Keller on here a while back. Uh, I listen. I was listening. To oh, him. nice. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like he's such a great dude, and I, I don't even think people realize like if you're a part of this local scene like this is the guy that you go to and um yeah. and how much he just gives like i'm pretty sure there's a day where i do a playlist of homegrown music and it's literally Aww. every single thing he's worked on yeah it's so awesome because he he like just watching him i grew up with him you know starting at love juice and us going like in our first band troop 101 mm-hmm. can you do you know a demo of us and he was great then and then just seeing him evolve into he used to have a studio in a box and he would come to your house <laughs> with a big box full of stuff and you know he'd do a demo and we were like these demos are good dude and he's like yeah you know i'm getting more into all this stuff and <laughs> Eventually, he just was our guy. We just we we did a couple writing sessions here and there, but like anything locally, we, we wanted to and we write ourselves. We always mm-hmm. go to him because he'd always have the best ideas and great melodies. And I mean, all and these he's, other, he's yeah. very honest. He is you know? very honest. Like he's very, very honest important. without being rude, but True. like you know, he he wants you to know what works and what doesn't. And if you're okay with taking that, you end up with the best possible song. So. Yeah, and you could definitely tell it translates through the music yeah, again because I mean the guy just pumps out he's hits great. after hits yeah. after hits. Yeah, Slade, you're actually the OG member yeah. of Ann Arbor, and I Danny, am. you came in in around 2016. So about, yeah, about six years ago. Okay, <laughs> there, so. okay. So, and then that was also around the last time that you did the last album, which was your self-titled, am right, I right? Right. Yeah. Um. So in between 2016 and now. Uh, I know there was a little bit of a hiatus. Like, what happened in between that time? We've been a band for a really long time, um, and we've had a lot of obstacles that we've had to um, get across. Um, I think that probably this was one of our hardest. We had, uh, like, right around, I think we, we had a tour with Sundressed, um, mm-hmm. and we had a show at Marquee with Catastro, and we were rehearsing. We had a drummer, and we were like, this guy's just not good enough. So we brought in another member. Matt was like, we know this guy. He's awesome. The only thing about him is he's like 16 years old. And we were like, let's give him a shot. He's like, I promise he's going to kill it. So we uh, we let him on within like yeah. three days. I think the show was in four days. Within three days, he learned the whole set. He was amazing. Wow. Like literally a prodigy. Um, we took him on tour, played a bunch of shows with him. When we got back, he, he took his life. So we had to just, you know, take a break, kind of sit back. We had, a, we had a bunch of songs written. We were about to ready to go to the studio. Mm-hmm. And we had to kind of sit back and be like, you know what? What do we? What kind of is this? We kind of just like let everybody calm down because it, it was weird. It was like a weird moment for us. Um, and then COVID kind of came about. Yeah. So after that, it was just kind of like, do we release music now? Like, what do we do? You know, it's like nobody's really doing anything. It would be kind of dumb for us to release a record. I, I think, in my opinion. So we we waited. We wrote more songs. Yeah. And... We we actually went in with Matt to do a record. Yeah. You know, we had like ten it. songs. We did all the pre production. Had the songs labeled out. And uh, and then we just I don't know Slade and I had a conversation one day that it just wasn't there like mm-hmm. it wasn't it wasn't the time and it wasn't definitely the best thing that we could have come up with and so we just took like a year and kind of yeah we um, took a year and I mean of course I felt really bad because he had j- kind of just joined and was kind of just like we were just finally getting the ball rolling and then all this stuff happened and. I wanted to make sure that he was still, you know, in it. I was like, dude, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to get music out with you. So we did put out, like, a couple EPs, I think, but we weren't ready yeah. to put a record out. Yeah, we were writing a bunch of stuff, just him and I together, just tons and tons of demos, all different kind of styles yeah, and whatnot, almost. just really messing around. And uh, so, yeah, we came out with those, or that EP, the Tangerine EP, about mm-hmm. two years ago. And we just had all these other songs, but we whittled them down to the absolute best of the best and yeah. that's what this new record is yeah. so it took us a minute to get there um but the cool thing about this band is for being a band as long as we have we only have four full full length records for being almost a band for 20 years which yeah is crazy right um and the only reason really why we're why we're still a band is because people are still listening and people want to so in like 2015 like 2013 when everybody kind of stopped everybody was like i don't want to be in the band anymore mm-hmm. so i just sit back again and be like do i do this you know do i what do i do um 
And the only reason I kept going was because people were still listening. They're like, when are you guys going to keep playing, blah, blah, blah. So I took, you know, a year or so off, maybe more, and got, you know, Adam back, the other old guitarist, and we just mm-hmm. went back at it. So there's just been so, so many things that just hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. Oh, you know? yeah, absolutely. So how does it feel now, you know, overcoming a lot of those hurdles and finally getting back to an album and, you know, just more notoriety and everything and giving people what they've been wanting for a long time. How's it feeling? It's huge. It feels great. And I think this is like one of the first steps for us for just being here with you, you know, like <laughs> read putting our roots down to Phoenix because we've been touring for so long and kind of lost that. So mm-hmm. it's I think it's important for us to really get back to the roots of, you know, where we are. So. I'm getting emotional here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really important for us, you know, like we I've grown yeah. up here my whole life. And so it's just And yeah. I mean artistically for me, like this is the thing I'm the most proud of that I've ever done as a musician. So I'm really excited to get this out and like and just see what people think. And I think it's gonna add a lot to what we do going forward and it just mixes well with all of our old music and just want to get out there and keep giving the people what they want. Trying to, yeah. Yeah, I I, I think you have been, you know, Letters in a Suitcase is probably one of my favorite songs that you guys released recently. I listened to that one a lot and, you know, every single single that you guys have been putting out, I've definitely been playing. Um, I'm curious, what is the (laughs) oldest song on this new album? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, that would be drugs. Drugs. Yeah. Drugs. drugs. Okay. Drugs. Yeah. I've this actually been sitting it. on that for like three years. Oh, maybe. nice. Um, we we went to Los Angeles in like October of 2018 or 19 to mm-hmm. do some just some co-writing sessions, and uh, there was one day I stayed a little extra than everyone else, and I did a writing session by myself with some other uh, writers in LA, and we just came up with that song, and I. We knew it was something. It was, was going to be great, yeah, it was and awesome. so we just held it in our pocket for all that time because we knew it. Like we didn't want to put it on an EP. EP yeah. Like we knew it had to be a single, like a centerpiece. Sort, yeah. yeah. And now it's almost the centerpiece of this album. You know, yeah. love and it holds us down. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah for sure. When when he shows me, I was like, "Oh, dude, come on!" <laughs> <laughs> you wrote this awesome, man. I was so proud of him. You know, it's cool. I love that. I love that when you can be proud of each other in a band. You know, a lot of people. I don't want to say a lot of bands. Will sometimes harness jealousy or things like that, but it happens, you know. Mm-hmm. It's good to see that there is a lot of love between you guys, so it it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Now you have this album release show coming out for Love and Drugs, and you have some special guests joining you as well, uh, Good Boy Daisy and Trouble Boy. Trouble yeah. Boy, yeah. yeah very uh, how did you become aware of their music? Like, have you guys been fans immediately since after hearing them, or how did you find out about them? I heard Trouble Boy on Alt Z when I was driving home from work one day. Shut um, up! And they were like, it was like the first time they played a song, and I was like, oh, this guy's you know really good. And then, uh, like, David, we work with a guy named David here, and he was like, you know, we're th- looking for artists for the show. And they threw out Trouble Boy, and I was like, I've heard this guy on the radio. I was like, <laughs> let's do it. And then we kind of, you know, talked a little bit. But And then Good Boy Daisy. Yeah, Good Boy Daisy. I've I've known them for a while because they, you know, started as, like, a school of rock band. Right. And uh, I used to work some events where they, you know, all the school of rock kids would all perform in front of all their parents and friends and family. And, um, and yeah, now they're just, like, putting out amazing music. And... You know, they were on that show with the Somerset with us at yeah. Crescent Ballroom recently. TikTok so, stars or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. AT <laughs> somehow went viral and that, yeah, so we, we lucked out on that. Oh, dude, that's rad. Yeah, it was cool. We didn't even have the app and it went viral. And then we jumped on, we were like, oh man, I guess we missed out on all these followers, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, is it, it's because the sound went viral, right? Right, the, yeah. the, oh. like, the, the sound, so... It kind of had to force it forced you to get into it TikTok. Basically, did and then our managers and everybody, yeah, like get to the TikTok, do the things. And we're like, okay. so yeah. now are you guys like me and you're watching TikTok late at night and laughing underneath the covers, and then you fall asleep and you hit your face, just like <laughs> drop the phone. phone on your face. Oh God, so yeah, many times, yeah, yeah. so many times. Yeah, I try not to be, but you know, you're a good person. Just you're a kid. <laughs> <laughs> you liar. Uh, you know, I want to go back to, uh, you know, these homegrown bands that we were just talking about. Are there any other homegrown bands that you guys thoroughly enjoy that deserve a little bit of love? We'll give more love to Belaganis. Those guys are absolutely crushing it. Yeah. Um, I mean, Priya Pete. He's yeah, a, just he's heard incredible. Priya Pete I for the first time. Love his sound so much. It's such a, like, familiar yet unique thing going on. Mm-hmm. So, love to hear that. Blue the Color um, is really cool. Blue the Color. Blue. Yeah, he's uh, he just did uh, his first full-length record with... Stravs, 
my brother. <laughs> I love that you air quoted it. <laughs> yeah, it's Strass. weird calling him that from me. But uh, what do you but, call yeah, him and normally? Andrew. Okay, well, you know, it's yeah, weird. No it's one weird. knows who Andrew is because yeah. he straps too. So I'm always like, I call we we call him Baby Joker. That's his nickname in the band. Yeah. So everybody calls him Joker, but it's just weird being around Straps because I'll call him Straps too, and it's I don't know. It's just that's what it is. Baby <laughs> Joker, <laughs> Baby Joker. Where did that come from? Oh, uh, for me, like story. tour, yeah, it's <laughs> just tour, yeah. Yeah, he was like it his was first like a, tour, and... a reference to American Me. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna ask. Yeah. Our buddy, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was our buddy, our buddy Kyle Rogers, who now he's the drum tech for Anderson Pack, and he's stop. Yeah. yeah. Shut so, your no, mouth. No he just joke. got the coolest job. No joke. And uh, but yeah, he drums for us when he can, and uh, he's the one that came up with the nickname because it was my first tour. And God, it stuck so hard. Oh my stuck God, so hard. God, it stuck. Do you have a baby Joker tattoo on you yet? No, I feel really? like you Why should just you get baby Joker, baby Joker under your eye or something. Should I just oh do my it across my stomach? Just the Joker. Just, <laughs> like a, just, just a little, little Joker. 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 <laughs> yeah, a little Joker. Joker tear drop. Now, before we go, is there anything that you want to let your fans know? Yeah, thank you so much for listening and keeping this band going because that's really, this is really the reason that we're here. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Mel, for having us. And gosh. I'm just glad we got all of this together. It makes me happy. Yeah, I mean. I- yeah. <laughs> I'm speechless. Yeah. <laughs> I'm speechless.